game two had 22 lead changes. We've already had a bunch here tonight so far. It's Tony Allen getting his first minutes. Davis against Odom. Davis falling away. Again, side of the backboard. Rough shooting start for Boston. Odom was in the backcourt. They've got to get it over. And Shannon Brown. Odom to Gasol. Now Gasol. Nice play from Wallace. Show him on first. Oh, Gasol wanted a foul. An excellent rejection. Rondo tries again. Rondo on the drive. Blocked by Odom, but a foul. The Celtics want a goaltend. Don't think they're going to get it as we listen to a Doc Rivers huddle. I like the pace. Let's keep that pace going, all right? Hey, Paul, y'all got great shots. We get those shots all game. We're going to have a lot of points tonight. We well, talked about the pace, and that's the key. Wants to force the tempo, but that all starts with the defense, Jeff. Right, and it's not just getting the stop, but it's really staying out of foul trouble and not fouling. The best transition defense the Lakers can have is get to the free throw line. I think the Celtics really have to be concerned. 31 free throws given up in game one, 41, and now they're in the penalty early tonight. They're going to have to keep out of the bonus and keep them off the free throw line so they have more transition opportunities. Rondo's struggles there continue. He's 3 for 10 in this series, now 3 for 11 in the finals. He was shooting better earlier in the playoffs, but struggling right now. That last foul was on Shannon Brown. Davis falls down. Odom inside to Gasol. And another whistle. And Pau Gasol will shoot. And the Maul Odom playing much better tonight. It's not about scoring, but you're talking about rebounding, active underneath, altering shots, and that time making plays. That's when he's at his best. So Gasol will get to the line. Game four of the NBA Finals Thursday back here in Boston on ABC. Tip off shortly after nine. And then game five Sunday, an hour earlier start, eight Eastern time. And then if the series goes back to Los Angeles, game six and seven will be at the Staples Center. The Saul misses Brown, tips it the right to Rondo. Final minute, first quarter. Great start for the Celtics. And a terrific recovery by the Lakers. Pretty pass. Tony Allen can't finish. But a foul was called. So now Allen will go to the line. Nate Robinson's going to get some early minutes. And the Lakers lead by five. Here you see Rondo and Garnett. All 16 of the points. Rest of the team without a field goal. But Doc Rivers said it well. Paul Pierce and Ray Allen had very quality looks. They just got to knock him in. And Rondo will sit. Robinson, who had six huge minutes in game two when Rondo was absolutely physically spent. He had played the entire first three quarters, sat down, and Robinson had seven points in those six minutes. Rondo caught his breath, came back out, and took over the game. Four point Laker lead. Brown inside. Shoots it over with Baby Davis. And the crowd has gone silent. They were going crazy for about a half hour before tip off. All fired up. Team jumped out to a six point, seven point lead. But it's been a 13 point turnaround. Shot clock down to five. Robinson. Wallace for three. Fisher. Ahead to Odom. Odom on the drive, gets inside, and a foul. Wallace hit him in the head, and a chance for a three-point play as the Lakers have opened up an eight-point lead. But they shot too early. And that allowed what should have been a last shot of the quarter situation to turn into a three-point play. Good advance pass by Derek Fisher. Good attack by Lamar Odom. 
Poor transition defense by the Celtics. And you can't have touch fouls. And Lamar Odom getting himself going. And coming in, the first two games, he had more fouls than points. He had more fouls than rebounds. But he's got five points, three boards in just six quick minutes. And hits the free throw. Point seven remaining. Davis will not get it off in time. And that will end the first quarter as the Lakers end with a 21 to 5 run. Celtics came out focused and strong, went up by seven. But a 16 point turnaround for the road team. First quarter complete here in game three. Lakers a nine point advantage. Welcome back to Boston with Phil Jackson. What allowed you guys to turn things around after Boston got started so quickly? We got off to such a slow start. I mean, they came out on fire, did all the things we didn't want them to do. Fast broke, got offensive rebounds, and we just had to call a timeout and say, let's get ourselves together here and let's get back out there and do the right things. And then we started doing the things that we wanted to do. Your intention was to get Lamar started, and you did that. Why, why was he able to get going? Well, I just substituted Lamar in there a little bit early. He had a couple breaks, had some things to penetration, and got a bank shot for a three, and those things really helped. All right, Doris, he can smile with this nine-point lead. And Jeff, he mentioned, had to call timeout. It was unusual for him to do that. He uses his timeouts differently than most coaches. Exactly. Regular season, he'll allow teams to play through bad runs, mistakes, to build a self-reliance for them to be able to correct themselves on the floor. Not so much in the playoffs, much more willing to take an early timeout knowing the magnitude of the game. It certainly helped them turn it around. Jordan Farmer is in. Wallace knocks it away from Bynum. Nate Robinson stays in the game. Again, Rondo a good start, but he picked up two fouls. Pierce, two fouls, and Perkins, two fouls. Our test has two for L.A. Wallace, quick turnaround. Ryan already with four rebounds. Tony Allen on Bryant. Bryant to the basket, banks it in, and a foul. Good aggressive move from Kobe Bryant. He's got nine points, and it's a double-figure lead for L.A. Again, you're in a quandary. Do you help off the corner, or do you stay at home? Rasheed Wallace on help. Glenn Davis late. Tony Allen's doing his job. That help has to come earlier, and I really think the, the free-throw differential didn't cost them in game two. But you play at a 15 free throw differential right now. It's an eight free throw differential. You're you're in big trouble. But you say you're in a quandary. You're really not. If you're in position to help on Kobe Bryant's drive, you have to help stop the basketball and then get back to your man. You live with those corner jump shots. These are not. This is not Ray Allen standing in the corner. So you have to give all out help and be able to get back to your man. Right. It was Luke Walton initially, and then Lamar Odom. And to me. You have to step up and prevent like a fisher from that corner three. But I think I agree with you. Not Lamar Odom, not Luke Walton. Davis. He's gonna have trouble over the link to Bynum. Backs in. Up. Knocked away. Good help again from the Laker defense. Laker defense that was so impressive in game one. Shannon Brown pulls up, knocks down the jumper, and it's a 14-point Laker lead. Doc Rose is going to call a timeout. The Celtics struggling after that initial burst of energy. They're shooting just 33% from the field. And again, the only field goals so far are from Garnett and Rondo. The 2010 FIFA World Cup begins ESPN Friday, June 11, first at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. South Africa against Mexico, then two Eastern, Uruguay, and France. The FIFA World Cup on ESPN Friday, June 11th. Oh, like an interesting substitution in the first quarter when Kevin Garnett was rolling about two and change left to go. Doc Rubens and Nate Robinson knocked down that jump shot, decided to take Kevin Garnett out of the ball game. That was a quandary when you talk about waiting for this guy to explode. He all of a sudden establishes a rhythm, and now he's, he's got to find it again when he gets back into the ball game. That's their first field goal in six and a half minutes. You heard Doc Rivers, or perhaps saw him, say extra pass, extra pass. That's what he keeps telling his team. They made it there. 
Bynum. Nice post move from Andrew Bynum. And the 